Hello, everyone. This is Micah hanging out here inside the Seacrest studio. And you know what? I got a whole bunch of awesome people here. I have myself. I also have... Ty. And you know what's also really cool is I have my buddy Maya here. And Maya, um, I believe we have um, a special guest with us. Who is that, Maya? Uh, Eric Nanninger. Eric, how's it going, Eric? Hey, good. How are you guys doing? Doing hey. great. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, welcome to Maya's latest news, Eric. And uh, I'll just hand it over to Maya and let her take it away. Okay, um, so my first question for you is who or what inspired you to start acting? You know what, Maya, I knew you were going to ask me this question because I was watching your YouTube channel this morning. And before I answer, I have to say you've talked to everyone, um, which I was blown away by. It's so incredible. You talked to Patrick Stewart. You talked to a, a real life knight, Maya, a sir. <laughs> I feel humbled to just be in the same Zoom link as, as Patrick Stewart was. Um, I grew up in a family that was uh, jokesters, practical jokesters. Um, we had like fake water bugs and, uh, you know, practical jokes on April the uh, 1st, on April Fool's Day. My mom would put Vaseline on doorknobs. So when you go to grab them, they would slip off. She would, you know, put salt in your water. So everybody was always joking around with everybody. And that got me interested in in comedy, you know, and mainly in television shows. And so I would watch TV shows all the time. Um, I watched every sitcom there was uh, growing up, you know, TGIF and Cheers and, you know, Will and Grace when I was a little bit older in the office and everything. And um, I always wanted to act out the stuff that I was seeing. I would come out of a movie and I would be saying the lines and I would be pretending to be the person um, on the screen or on the TV, whether it was, you know, Tom Hanks or the guys on the sitcoms at home. And that just led me to start doing plays as young as elementary school. I was doing plays when I was in third grade and fourth grade and fifth grade, and then all in junior high and all in high school. And then I finally went and, you know, decided to make a career out of it. But people that inspired me were my family pretty much just like constantly trying to make each other laugh. That was my favorite thing to do. Cool. Um, so you were in the movie Jeepers Creepers 2. Um, what draws you to the horror genre? I, I don't like horror at all. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch horror movies. I They creep me out. I don't like blood. I don't like monsters, but I like acting. So when I was auditioning for that and I got it, you know, I was really excited. I mean, it's so amazing to be in a movie you know, in a big movie like that with special effects. But other than Jeepers Creepers 2, I don't really watch horror movies at all, <laughs> if you can believe it. Um, but that was that was incredible. I was young. Um, it was a big movie with a big, scary monster. There were times that we were shooting some of the scenes late at night, you know, 2, 3 a.m. in the morning, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. And it wasn't that hard to pretend like you were scared because you're in a bus that's broken down you're in a field at 3 a.m. and then this guy comes along with the most incredible Halloween costume you've ever seen. <laughs> and it's, it's very easy to get scared when, uh, when the creeper was there in the back. So, but other than that, I don't want to, I don't want to watch horror movies. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like horror movies either. Like I love thrillers, but horror movies, I will not sleep. So <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm like you. I like thrillers. I like, you know, crime solving or you don't know what's going to come next kind of thing. But if it's yeah. the the blood and the guts, I'll leave that to somebody else to watch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you played Scott in One Day at a Time. And I just I love that show. I rewatch it all the time. Thank um, you. What was your favorite part about working on this amazing show? Um, the people. You know, I was actually friends with some of them before I started. So that was really exciting. Todd Grinnell, who plays Schneider, who I know you talked to as well. Um, And actually his wife, India DeBeaufort, who was uh, Schneider's girlfriend in seasons three and four also. And then I knew uh, some of the creators. um, And so that was really great to then get to do something with your friends. That was also, you know, an amazing job um, and, and such a great show. So professional, so funny, so warm. So it was like this cool combination of hanging out, but also doing something that everyone was going to see. And then you get to meet Rita Moreno and Norman Lear, 
um, who are just these icons. It was kind of surreal that I was doing jokes for Norman Lear, who was laughing at them, which I still don't believe that he was laughing. I think he, <laughs> there's no way I was making Norman Lear laugh. You know? um, but it's, it's so much fun. It's so much fun to rehearse that all week long. Um, and it's a little bit like being back in a theater because you're doing it live. And then it's hilarious jokes that are also warm. Uh, so the combination of all that made it one of my, my favorite jobs, too. really was. Oh, cool. Um, so you played Joseph Carver in season six of The Flash. Um, I also love that show. And I mm. rewatched every season during quarantine. Did you? Um, <laughs> yeah. That was your binge show? Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so... Uh, what was your favorite part about working on a superhero show? So that's a really cool show, too. And I had only seen a little bit of them. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a TV fan, so I watch everything. But when I got hired to be on it, I got a chance to watch a bunch of them. Um, and it's fun. You know, like I love that The Flash is not too serious all the time. You know, it's not a real yeah. dark, long show. But there's times that it's really cool. You know, and so for me, my favorite point was actually my last moment. I don't want to spoil it, but, you know, there's a point when Joseph Carver's not on the show anymore, just for everyone that hasn't seen it yet. <laughs> um, so close to that point when Joseph Carver's not going to be around anymore. I was in this lab, you know, as you know, my wife was a scientist, sort of an evil scientist. And it was the first time that Grant Gunderson was in the Flash uniform. And then my wife, um, she's in her superhero outfit as well. And I was standing there and it was just like, Maya, it was so cool to be across from the Flash in the actual Flash uniform. It's the greatest, like I said about the Creeper, the best Halloween costume you've ever seen. And I just, it, I realized that I was on a superhero show and I even said it out loud. I was like, you guys, this is, this is awesome. Like, that's the Flash right there. That's literally the Flash. And his suit is so cool. It's so thick. It, you know, if you're up close to it, it's not like the little one you get at, you know, the Halloween store that you can put on for, for your costume. It's, it's amazing. And that kind of made me get excited like I was a kid, like I was a fan. But just because I was around the real Flash and he was trying to save me, um, it didn't go too well, though. He didn't. He didn't save me, <laughs> as you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I st so I've been during quarantine. I've been re obsessing over the Flash, and um, so I've been like going through a phase where I'm just buying like everything the Flash. Oh and really? So, yeah. So I bought like. So I'm wearing like my Star Labs sweatpants because yeah. that's what I was buying during quarantine, just sweatpants. Um, right, as, as we all were, right? We had to yeah. expand our sweatpant wardrobe. Yeah. Um, and like my Star Labs jacket, which I that's... just had on and then had to take off because it got too hot. So. Oh, no. Oh, no. I wish I so... had something on for me, me, too. I don't have anything with me now. <laughs> that's cool. Do you have any upcoming projects? Nothing right now because I've been quarantined in sweatpants for <laughs> like the rest of us. But the acting industry is, is starting to come back, um, which is good. They're figuring out how to shoot things. And so hopefully I'll be back around some of my friends on a set again, uh, either doing comedy. That's kind of the two things I do well. <laughs> um, so is there a show that you're currently binge watching? My daughter and I did all of the Harry Potters right when that started. We did all eight movies twice because we had plenty of time. Yeah, um, my yeah, my family and I have we've binge watched so many shows during quarantine. So Yeah. I mean everyone's yeah. just wearing out their Netflix account. And then I don't yeah. know if this happens with you guys, but whenever I talk to anybody, that's the first thing is I say, Well what are you watching? Because I need a yeah. new show. I've gone through all my shows. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to start turning into the Seacrest Studios over in Colorado and see what you guys are airing. <laughs> so I have something to watch. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we just finished watching this show on Amazon Prime called Wayne. Oh, okay. I don't know um, that one yet. Thank you. That's good. Yeah, it's really good. It's really funny. Um, so, yeah, we just finished binge watching that. And so okay, I finished... Great 
The Flash, and now I'm binge watching Arrow. So <laughs> nice. You are a DC girl. You are deep in the DC universe. That's great. Yeah. You know, my my wife is an actress as well. My wife is Angel Parker, and she was on um, a Marvel show called Runaways, where she was a Marvel villain. So when I was on The Flash, I was a DC villain, and we had a little competition in the house over which was better, you know. But also, <laughs> both of us were villains, so we respected each other. But that was a fun little. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, I actually, I was obsessed with the show Lab Rats, which Ooh. I know Angel Parker was So you on. know Angel, yeah. Tasha yeah. Davenport, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, very cool. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, my sister and I also always argue about which one's better, Marvel or DC. Yeah, we that's never, the old argument. Yeah, we never actually come up with, like, we're always just like, okay, both are good. Yeah, so. it's, a, it's an endless argument. There's no end to that argument. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so is there a certain line from a book or a movie that has always stuck with you or inspires you? I'm a big Shakespeare fan. Um, I like when I was younger, I would do a lot of Shakespeare plays and I would study a lot of Shakespeare. Um and so there's a line from a play called Henry V. This is really, this is kind of nerdy that I'm going to quote a Shakespeare play. I just want to preface this by saying I'm, I'm really a dork that I'm going to about. I'm going to say a Shakespeare line here. But uh, the guy, the king, is about to go off to war, and he's trying to get everybody inspired to go to war because it's Henry V. So they're going to fight France. And he says, and I'll paraphrase it a little bit. He says, all of the the gentlemen that are, that are at home in England right now sleeping will not be able to brag about how great they are around any one of us who are here fighting the war because we're the ones that are fighting it and they're the ones that are sleeping. So it's, and gentlemen in England now a bed shall think themselves accursed they were not here and hold their worth cheap whilst any speaks who fought with us on St. Crispin's Day. So all the rich guys at home sleeping won't be able to brag around all the real men that are out here fighting and that always inspired me to go out and actually do things rather than talking about them or wishing to do them. That always gets me up, you know, in the morning and to go out and try to be an actor or to tackle any adventure there yeah. is knowing that I'll be able to say at least I was in the fight. So, yeah. again, very dorky to be talking about Shakespeare. <laughs> but you yeah. asked. You asked. Yeah, yeah I, I have to admit, I was kind of lost when you <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's my sh that's how good my Shakespeare is that you had no idea what I was saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah we've so was everybody watching too. Everyone's like, I'm sorry, what? Go back to the yeah. flash, dude. Go back to the flash. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've had to read a couple of, like uh, Romeo and Juliet and Hamlet sure. for school, and I had to read Hamlet last year, and I was so lost. I was like, I, ha I have no idea what's going on. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> I, I studied it professionally, and I get lost. There's a book called Shakespeare for Dummies that just like tells you very simply everything that goes on in a play. And before I ever read one or see one, I always read the Shakespeare for Dummies because <laughs> it, it lays it out really clearly. So even the professionals are reading. You know, I bet Patrick Stewart was pretty good at Shakespeare. I bet when he talked about Shakespeare, you understood what he was saying. But <laughs> yeah. other than that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what's the most useless piece of trivia that you know? Oh, my gosh. I know so much useless trivia all the time because I'm one of those guys that, like, watches Jeopardy just to know the answers. Um, I'm trying to think, but to me, I always think it's very useful. I try to tell my kids all that kind of stuff like that. Um, my daughter's always giving me uh, useless trivia about animals and things. What is the, the, the bug that, where the, the female bug eats the boy, the male bug, it's the grasshopper, right? Or the, um, the praying mantis. She always tells me that. She's yeah. like, you know, praying mantises when the, the females always eat the males. And I'm like, thank you very much for that, Naomi. That's my daughter's <laughs> name. I'm glad that you just told me that piece of trivia right there. So that's the first one that pops to my mind is that those female ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I know a lot of trivia, uh, a lot of like facts about shows that no, nothing uh, ever comes up. So usually I'm just saying it and it doesn't relate to anything we were talking about. So nice. <laughs> Later on today, something's going to pop in my head today and I'm going to go, that's useless trivia right there that I could have said. <laughs> um, so what terrible movie do you secretly love? <laughs> <laughs> um oh my gosh my uh my daughter and i watch a movie called santa paws um <laughs> which is about three or four little fluffy dogs that save christmas and it's really really bad i mean it's <laughs> it's not a lot of budget and stuff but but she's a fan and so i think i end up watching that one because it's so much fun to watch it with her it's terrible but if you ever check it out, I think there's a sequel too. I think there's Santa Paws too, as well, which I haven't seen. <laughs> yeah, um, I love uh, my whole family. We love this movie called Ishtar. Mm -hmm. um, that is I've heard one. Of it. Yeah. Of, yeah, that is one of our favorite movies ever. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually we've watched it like a hundred times. And oh my we, gosh. Um, watched it for our birthday last month. Uh, wait, what? Yes, last month. I forgot. That's what, what you decided to do for your birthday. That was what you wanted to do yes. for your birthday was watch Ishtar. Yeah, <laughs> we watched that and then City Slickers with Bill. Nice. Crystal, so that's a good. That's a good one. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. So, what song would be on the soundtrack to your life? <sighs> Something jazz, you know, um, maybe I was going to say a jazz music, but maybe Led Zeppelin, which is like pretty good blues rock stuff. Um, so any one of theirs maybe would kind of keep me moving. I guess I sort of like to be motivated by music and quotes and things. But um, yeah, you could pick any Led Zeppelin song and that could go on the soundtrack of my life. That's pretty good. What about you? Oh, cool. Uh, Do you have um, one? Um. I don't know. There's a lot. Right now, I've been um, listening to the Julian the Phantom soundtrack, which is a Netflix show. That's, oh, okay. that's another one that we binged watched when I came out. It's so nice. good. Um, so I've been listening to that soundtrack a lot. And I'm really, uh, I love um, the uh, song Wake Up because there's mm -hmm. this one line that is like very personal to me she says wake up wake up if it's all you do and like i just kind of interpret that in like a way that is just like very personal to me so i think right now that would probably be that's a great one yeah same kind of idea it's like uh keep yourself moving keep yourself getting going you know yeah that's cool i like it i'm gonna have to check that one out yeah, it, it's really good. Um, yeah. So uh, my last question for you is, who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? That's a good question, right? That's what people always say when they're trying to think of answers. They say, that's a good question. Um, a real life superhero and why? I mean, I... The, the, I think that right now, especially with everything, you know, people being locked down in quarantine, I feel like the moms are like the superheroes right now a little bit, which sounds, I don't know. There's something about like, like the moms that are raising the kids right now and are still working at home and are still putting stuff together, you know, and, and, and trying to get it all together. And sometimes that I look at them and I think like, that's incredible. Um, not that dads aren't amazing too. We are, but everybody, parents, I guess, in general, you know, the ones that are at home right now that are doing the homeschooling, that are keeping the kids, you know, as sane as possible. They're figuring out how to pay for everything, you know, with, with times being so hard as they are right now are everyday superheroes. And I think it's really hard to do that day after day after day after day. But, um, it's exciting because we're all trying to do it together in a different way. Um, and I say exciting because it's hopefully it's going to be something that we all went through um, that we grow and we get stronger and we get closer because of. Uh, so mm -hmm. like you saying that you were buying more sweatpants and that you were binging a bunch of TV shows, we're all kind of doing that. 
And so at the end of this, or when this passes, or when this changes into something else, we can come out and be like, I did that as well, too. Yeah, <laughs> we have a little yeah. bit of a connection. So as a parent, yeah. I look at other parents, and I'm like, these parents that are doing this, the moms and the dads are um, legitimate superheroes getting through all this. So yeah. Yeah, um, my mom and my sister and I are all very close. And so mm -hmm. we just, um, we were um, talking, we were talking about it a while ago, about how we've been quarantined together for like six months and we're not sick of each other yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so we were like, that, that's a good thing that we're not sick of each other yet. Yeah, right. That's a, that's a, a superhero feat right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. So like I was saying, I was buying all this flash stuff online and then I bought this arrow necklace because that is also my obsession and my mom nice. and they are getting, um, they're like, do you really, I'm sorry, Le Leia is my sister's name. Uh -huh. Um, and we, um, they're like, do you really need more sweatpants? Do you really need more <laughs> necklaces? I'm like, Yes, I do. I need all of this stuff. <laughs> so. Don't bother me. I need it all. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so great. Yeah. Um, so the, I, that was my last question. So thank you so, so much for calling in. Thank I you had, so much for having me. Yeah, I had so much fun talking to you. Me too. That was really great. Hopefully everybody else did too, right? <laughs> yeah, it was great. Yeah. Thank you very much, Eric. Really appreciate it. Absolutely, I enjoyed guys. the show. Thank you yeah. all so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Take all care, right. everyone. Take care, Bye, Bye Eric. Nice meeting you. You too. Bye. <laughs> See ya.